Personal finance practice problem using OneNote. Coupon savings calculation. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. If you have access to OneNote, would like to follow along, we're in the icon on the left-hand side, Practice Problems tab, in the 6170 Coupon Savings Calculation tab. Also note that you might want to take a look at the Immersive Reader tool and the text files, which should have the same name and number and possibly the transcripts that can be translated into multiple languages and either listened to or read in them. We're going to be using our time value of money calculations, our present value and future value calculations to think about the savings over time we might get from the use of coupons. As we do so, I want to keep a couple things in mind. One would be how someone might use present value and future calculations in order to basically make an argument and support their argument. So for example, here, if you're talking to someone that's trying to give you or tell you about the value of the use of coupons over time, what type of calculations might they use from present value and future value calculations to support their argument? If you were talking to someone that's trying to say that coupons aren't worthwhile, they're not saving you as much money as you think, and the time is not worth the savings, what kind of present value and future value arguments might they use or how might they frame the argument? And then of course, if you were trying to make a decision yourself in terms of what kind of habits do I want to be putting in place with regards to things like saving coupons, then how can I compile my data so that I can make a fair decision? So remember that the present value and future calculations are usually there for longer term type of decisions because that's when we want to make a more systematic uh, decision making process. When we're talking about habits, such as the use of coupons, for example, then we want to possibly look at it in a long term kind of perspective and then try to gear our day to day behavior to basically be in alignment with what we think is good for that for that long term uh, perspective, not doing this calculation every time we make we buy a coupon, for example. But if we've come to the conclusion that, uh, you know, doing coupons is worthwhile for us, then get in the in the habit and trusting that long term calculation we've made to do them or or vice versa. Right. So these are the general ideas we want to keep in mind. So we're going to assume the savings due to coupons each month are going to be seventy five dollars. So the amount saved after uh, years of six years at a rate of eight percent. So if you saved seventy five dollars with the use of coupons, then after six years, you know, what would your savings be or what would be your future value be if you were able to get an 8% return on that $75? So we could say, okay, well, that would mean we'd have the monthly savings of $75. The quick calculation would be that after a year, we would say 75 times 12, that would give us then $900 after a year that we would save with the use of coupons. So now, of course, we could do that quick calculation and kind of compare and contrast the $900 versus the time that we put in to save the $75 a month uh, for the coupons. And that's the first kind of thought process or calculation we, we might try to annualize uh, in that way. Then we could say, okay, let's try to take the easiest kind of future value calculation using that $900. If I was to save $900 for, for uh, a year, by using the coupons, then I could say, let's, let's do a future value calculation and see how much we would have in future value terms after the six year time frame. So if you did this in Excel, I won't go into this in detail. We did do this in Excel, but it would be a future value calculation looking like this. You could also do it with a calculator. You could do it with tables. We won't get into all that, but you'll use your future value tools, which is the future value of the rate so we're picking up the rate, which is going to be 8% per year. We're using a yearly rate because we annualize the savings of the coupons. And then we've got the argument for the number of periods, which we're going to use six. We're talking years, not months. That's why we annualized it to kind of simplify the problem a bit because it's just an estimate and then comma. And then we've got the payment amount, which we're going to say is $900. We're not actually putting $900 or saving $900 per year, we're actually saving 75 per month. So it's a, it's, we're estimating it again to make it a yearly kind of uh, calculation. And that's what we have to do to simplify the, the calculation for the tool. We could also do it on a monthly basis. We might take a look at that as well, but that would give us then future value of 6,602. Now note that if we were trying to argue from the standpoint that having in habit of saving coupons is a good idea, a good thing, 
then we would probably use a calculation like this because we end up with the future value. So we're going to say, yeah, if you save 75 and you were able to put that away and earn the 8%, then after the six years, you might be at that 6,602. But that's kind of like a future value term number at the same time. So and I just point this out because this happens a lot of times whenever you're talking about longer term types of projects and we're using these time value of money calculations, oftentimes when we're people are presenting these calculations, they might have an interest in whatever the decision outcome will be. And you want to know what the interest is for the individual because it's likely they're going to be gearing their calculations in the most optimistic type of way and looking at the calculations from one lens. And clearly what we want to do is from a from a fair decision standpoint is look at it from multiple lens and then make a decision after we've seen all the angles that are going to be involved in it. So just something, you know, you want to just kind of keep in mind whenever you whenever these tools are going to be used, whenever statistics are used in general, whenever words are used, you have the same problem, right? People make arguments that are supporting they leave out other arguments we see that with word arguments numbers are the same thing right you could present one side of the argument okay so we could say hey yeah but that's that's still kind of that's like future value numbers you could kind of calculate a middle value number you could say well maybe i'm not going to earn the eight percent maybe if i save 75 dollars, then i'm not going to be able to get you know the eight percent so you could try to get a, a middle ground number and say well really i'm going to get the 900 per year times six years, that would be the $5,400 that we would earn. And you could go on a more, you know, the pessimistic side of things and say, well, yeah, I'm going to save the $75, but I'm going to have to put time in it and so on to do it as well. And I don't think I'm going to earn uh, the 8%. What I'm really going to do is I'm going to have this, this $900 that I'm going to discount over the the next six years and at a discount rate we'll use the same eight percent of the discount rate because if i'm saving if you're telling me i'm saving nine hundred dollars a year and i'm not earning say eight percent on it the first nine hundred dollars in the first year is worth more than the second nine hundred dollars the second year out so you could say well if i did that uh for for six years and i discount it back to the present value, in other words, what would this stream of $900 be if I was to receive $900 each year for the next six years? You could say, okay, well, if I take the present value of the rate and the rate is going to be, we're gonna use the same 8% here, the number of periods we're gonna say is the six years. So I got six years and the payment this time, we're gonna get the payment of the $900, a series of payments that we're going to be receiving, then if I discount that, that would be the most pessimistic number of the 4,161. So again, if you were, if you can see someone was making the arguments on, on this type of thing, if they had a stake or an interest in the outcome and, and they wanted this action to be taken, in this case, you know, using the coupons, they'd probably use this, the most optimistic number uh, assuming we're getting a gain on it. And if you were on the pessimistic side, you'd say, well, yeah, no, I'm not sure I'm going to get that gain. In fact, I think I'm just going to get the cash flow of the 600 for the or the 900 for the six years. And if I discount that at that rate that you're using, the really the cash flow payments would be worth the 4,000, you know, 161. So the bottom line, I just want to note that you want to be able to look at things from multiple different angles with regards to saving money and, of course, putting in habits that save money. I think that's that could clearly accumulate over time and be a useful uh, a useful thing to do. But like anything else, when you're kind of training yourself to have those habits, you want to weigh out the pros and cons and take into consider the savings and the amount of time that's going to be put into that savings as well. And also just the kind of changes in the purchasing habits that you might have uh, if you're using, you know, coupons, because obviously then you're going to be you're going to be guided to to purchase the products that are going to have the coupons and so on and so forth. And that that kind of alters behavior in some instance as well. Now, we could think about this a couple different ways. Let's just do our time value of money calculations. If I was going to verify this calculation down below, I can do it this way. And we could say if we had periods, let's say we had periods one through six, and we're starting off with the $900. This is how the calculation is going to work. So then we're going to say that that in period one, when we do an annuity calculation, we're not calculating any interest at the, that point. So you got to keep in mind that starting point that we're going to be working on 
and then we're going to be calculating the the savings on it assuming we invest the 900 so we've got the 900 times the 0 0.08 there's the 72 and then we're going to add that to plus the 900 that we're going to put in at the end of the second period plus the 900 we started with there's the 1872 then on that 1872 we're going to say multiply that times the 0 0.08 and that's going to give us the about 450 and we're going to put in another 900 plus the 900 and we we had the prior balance of the 1872 so that's going to be the 2922 about and then let's do it one more time we'll take that and multiply it times the 0 0.08 and that's going to give us our 234 about plus we're going to put in the 900 again and we had the prior balance of the 2922 and there's the 4052 that then if we do that all the way down gets us to that 6602 so it's nice to be able to see how to get to that 6602 with an actual table that gives us a better idea also note that we did kind of estimate this because this uh the 900 we're actually having savings per month and so when we do a, a periodic table that's on the end of each year then that's going to be a, a type of simplification which may or may not be a problem because it's just an estimate. So sometimes those simplifications are not, are not a problem due to the fact that it's an estimate. Now, if I was to basically present value that, let's just assume just to, just to get an idea and say, okay, well, yeah, but that's in future value terms. So, so if I was to present value that number at the same discount rate, just to, just to show you how these kind of these present value and future values work, we could say, okay, I'm going to take that number, that 6602, and do a present value calculation at the rate of the 8%. And then the number of periods is going to be 6. And then the payment is going to be, and I'm not going to take the payment, comma, comma. I'm going to take the present value of that future value, the 4,000, I mean, the 6,602 that we came out to. And that present value calculation would get us back to that uh, 4,161, just so you could see how that how those two how those two items are playing out now you could also do this on a month by month basis you might say hey look that's kind of a you, you know you kind of rounded why don't why don't if i'm getting if i'm saving 75 a month and i'm going to put that in to the bank and get savings on it each month why don't i do the future value calculation on a monthly basis instead of annualizing it you could you could do that so you'll come up with a slightly different number so you could see how we kind of rounded it up here come up with a slightly different here because if you took the $75 and put it into savings each month and earned the the annual rate of 8%, it would look something like this. We'd say the future value, the rate now would be this number, the 8% divided by 12 because now we're talking on a, on a month by month basis and then comma the number of periods, now we're talking 6 years times 12 because we're on a month by month basis and then the payment would be not the 900 but the 75 dollars each month and that gets to the 6902 and it's a little bit higher because now we're getting we're earning not on just the 900 at the at the year total but each on each month that we put the 75 in and we could do the same thing with the present value calculation we could something a little bit different than we had up top we could say well the present value of the rate which is going to be the eight percent divided by 12 to get the monthly rate the number of periods would be the six years and then we multiply to what by 12 to get to the months and then we're going to say that the payment now is not the 900 but the 75 and we would get the present value of the 4278